Well, this young man was uh, called by his boss one day, and he's got two degrees, not one, but two. And he was away using the restroom. His boss said, are you okay? He said, cried out loud, man, I'm a grown man. Can I run to the restroom? Because his keyboards were not. Think about that. That's enough to, is that enough to get you teed off to work your ACM business harder? I mean, really, think about it. And he says, you know, this time was I made a commitment to sleep onto the floor until I got the regional director. And I'm out every day. Without further ado, our feature uh, guest speaker for Friday this month, it's called Fireworks Friday. Without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to You Got Mail, application needed week, no deposit, no return, the great Sam Foster! Thank you, Mr. Thomas, for um, stepping in in my little small absence. Thank you, Mr. Debris Clemens, for uh, texting me. I finally got it right. Uh, if you're taking notes, we're going to be quick 10 minutes taking notes. The pain of remaining the same. The pain of remaining the same. And the reason why I say that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here at this conference, and I've been at this conference for the last three days. And I've gotten a lot of insight at this conference. Uh, last night, we had an awesome call by Mr. Thomas, who uh, did our private call. And it was really after the call that really struck me in amazement because Mr. Thomas was actually giving nuggets. I mean, dropping true nuggets, true to form as the leader that he is. I don't know if Mr. Jabri Clemens had taped it or not, but it was phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. And I got a lot out of it, Mr. Thomas, so I want to say thank you. But the pain of remaining the same, ladies and gentlemen, I want this to sink in to everybody who is on this call, the pain of remaining the same. Why is that? Because I want everybody to realize that where we're at, we're supposed to be further. We're supposed to be further. And not trying to be ugly, not trying to be funny, not trying to be difficult about it when I say this, but poverty can be a curse. Poverty can be a curse. And the reason why I say poverty can be a curse is because we have so many people that can really take advantage of the opportunity that we have, but they've been stuck in a position for so long it's hard for the average person to move. Mr. Thomas kind of hit on that yesterday, last night when he was talking about how your behavior is and how people recognize you when you come in the door and how you really have to put yourself in a position where even if you're not there yet, you have to position yourself to be there. And that's why I say the pain of remaining the same. Now, last week, if you guys were on the call, you notice I end the call by saying, People don't change until the pain of remaining the same becomes too great. And that's true. It, but it should always have to be that way that you get to the pain process in order to change. You can make changes each and every day, ladies and gentlemen, by the small things that you do, just the minute things that you do. And that it was said earlier this week, stacking it, just the small things that you do. It doesn't have to be big things. It can be the things that you do routinely. Sometimes you have to learn to pivot on those things. Now, we got on the call last night, okay? It was only about four or five of us on the call, which was a nice number. We had a nice number of people that we called, but it should be more people on the call. You don't have to have five or six people on the call. Just shoot for one, and then let one turn into two, then two turn into three, and so on and so on and so on. We have too many people that we have on these calls to have such a small number of doing the calls at night. Now, this is not a bad session. This is not me trying to be funny because like I always say, a large number of people come on the call or get on my calls at a later time, you know, to get encouraged and I get all of that. But we have the antidote to most people's problems. We have a residual income situation going on that takes everybody doing the things that they were already doing. It's not a change in their schedule. It's not an interruption or anything. I want somebody to get that because somebody's struggling with what comes natural to all of us and you shouldn't be struggling. But some of us have a situation going on where it's hard for us to move because we're in what we typically call a comfort zone. 
And we have to come out the comfort zone that we're in. Not just us on the car, but most of us know somebody that's in a comfort zone. That's why they don't move in terms of trying to get into ACN and do what you're supposed to be doing. How do you know that, Sam? Now watch this, ladies and gentlemen. What makes the average person not get into ACN at a cost of $224 one-time fee? Now, you know that's not a whole, mo a ho whole lot of money for getting into a business. We all know that. But sometimes we get into a comfort zone that we can break out of. Now, I'm going to ask you guys a question that I want this to penetrate in your mind long after you're off this call. What's the difference between a person that's uh, going to work at a Fortune 500 company and somebody that's getting up every morning going to, let's say, a McDonald's job? Put it in the chat for me. Put it in the chat for me. We'll be quick. Put it in the chat. What's the difference? If anybody knows the difference of somebody that can go to a Fortune 500 company and work that company in the same morning as opposed to going to a McDonald's job. Okay, somebody just said mind state. Darrell Ransom said mind state. Okay. Belief system, mindset and belief system. Okay, Heather Perry got it correct. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. There is no difference. That's what I want you guys to understand. And now I understand, Mr. Thomas, now I understand, Tammy Williams, why this call took so long. Because the enemy did not want this penetration. Because watch this. Let me repeat. There is no difference than somebody going to a Fortune 500 job and making six figures or seven figures somebody getting up every morning going to McDonald's and working for minimum wage. Why? Because they both have to get up and go. Watch this. Poverty is a curse. We can break that curse. Poverty is a curse. I used to hate to say that. And I learned that from my pastor. I hated it when he said it. But it's true. Poverty is a curse. Because you can change that system. You can change that system. How do you know that, Sam? Because simply put, ladies and gentlemen, if we have what we have to do every day and everybody else, everybody else has to do this same system, the only difference between us and them is that we've chosen, we've chosen to make a difference. But in order to, there's a difference between choosing to make a difference in doing the difference. Now, hopefully on this call, we have ladies and gentlemen that have chosen to do the difference instead of just thinking about a difference. Because it's one thing to think something, it's another thing to apply the thought. That means to take action, apply the thought. And once you apply the thought, be consistent, that's it. And once you do that, ladies and gentlemen, your business will, will not only survive, but it will thrive. You have to apply it. So that's why I say the pain of remaining the same. If you put that in your mind that you're going to apply these principles that were just spoken of, you will have no problem. Why? Because your application is consistent. Once your application of doing something about it becomes consistent, then success is inevitable. Once again, success becomes inevitable. Why? Because you can't get around what we do. As a company, nobody can get around what we do. They're essentials. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. I only wanted to get on this call to express that to you guys. Why? Because somebody needs to say to themselves, the pain of remaining the same. Go in the mirror and say to yourself, the pain of remaining the same has officially become too great. Thank you, guys. Love you guys. See you guys next week. Mr. Thomas, back to you. I'm going to go into some teaching. Yeah, I'm going to go into some teaching. I want to go, go, go grab, if you guys got beach money, I'm going to talk about my dear, one of my millionaires I trade. The beach money. If you got beach money, go grab beach money. See, a leader always have two or three, like a pastor. They always have two or three messes backed up, ready to go. Ready to go. 
Are you ready to go? Go grab beach money. You got 30 seconds. Go grab beach money. I'm going to teach today. I'm going to teach out of beach money. Out of beach money. I'm going to teach you a skill out of beach money. Out of beach money. Go grab it. 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 You got 10 seconds left to go grab beach money. Yeah, I got backup. Oh, you better believe I got back. I'm always ready. A leader is always ready. Always, always what? Always ready. Now, I'm going to talk about momentum. That's right, Miss Perry. I'm always ready. Bible says, be, oh, let me be quiet. I'm going to teach, not preach. Okay. Beach Money, chapter one, chapter one. In the beginning, that's the Bible. <laughs> All right. Beach Money. Get Beach Money. Chapter one, chapter one, chapter one, chapter one, chapter one. Now, I'm going to go down one paragraph, the second paragraph. Uh, halfway down the second paragraph to the right, it says beach money does not mean working for money at all. Okay. Working for money at all. You guys found that? If you got it, give me, yeah, give me, no, nah, give me, no, nah, I'm going to go flip through here. Beach, okay, you got it, Mr. Ismail. Okay, Tammy, you got it. All right. Now, I'm going to teach you how to beach money here, beach money. I'm going to talk about realism, 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 realism. Real, I hope Sam Foss is all right. Realism. Okay. It says beach money does not mean working for money at all. Wow. That's powerful. See, all your life, you've been trained to work for money. That's look, not to work for money. It said, in fact, listen up. In fact, beach money, read it with me, is a hundred percent passive. What? Income. See, people don't understand passive income. One, we learn how to work for money. Mom and dad told us, son, daughter, go to school, get a good education, find a good job. Right. <laughs> right. And find a good and job don't even go together. Have y'all noticed that? <laughs> I never found a person with a good job. I never heard, it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. That's oxymoron. There's no such thing as good job. See, that's the whole idea. See, 100% passive income, so important. Now watch this. Let me read on. Passive income is royalty income that comes in, listen to this, week after week, month after month, year after, boy, that's so sexy right there. After year. Let me say that again. Passive income is royalty. I, do you realize that you're royalty, Miss Jones, out there in South You're royalty, young lady. You know, purple. Yeah, royalty. Royalty. Passive income is royalty income that comes week after week. Mm, let that sink in. That's like a good, that's like the Carter's good cooking. It is, let, it, let it simmer for a minute. Week after week, month after month, year after year. Wow. When you have beast money, you have complete, most of the word, I underline the word complete. You have complete and total what? Freedom. Let me tell you what freedom looks like. Yesterday was one of my days. I had to talk to my attorney. I had to go see my CPA to sign papers. So yesterday was my legal, legal day, I'd say, around town. And I figured, okay, I'm going to take my day, and I want to go down to this new cigar bar that's on the strip in the brand new uh, uh, hotel they built. supposed to be called Eight. It's supposed to be fantastic. And I, there's a new hotel downtown, downtown I've never been to, circus or something. Never been there either. Because of freedom, I said, hmm, after the call yesterday with Mr. Anthony Woods, did he do a great job yesterday? I said, I'm going to go down. I got to see my CPA. I got to go way across town, see her, sign some papers, stop at Sam's Club, gas my car. And I'm going to just do what I call a run around or just a walkabout because I have freedom. So that was my day yesterday. I got up, went down there, the place, parked my car. Thank God it was free parking. Had, went to the cigar bar. What, look at this brand new hotel. Oh my God, look at this. Oh my God. The guy said, we don't open at four o'clock. I said, okay, thank you. So I'm just strolling along, flip flops and tennis shoes and shorts here in Vegas. Got back in my car, drove downtown, parked it down there for $15. And I walked to the new hotel and the lady says, I need your ID to walk in. I said, ID to walk in. I showed it to her. She's local. Go ahead. I walked in, walked around. I tried to see if I could prospect somebody and the place was dead. And I walked on the second floor. I heard about this big screen outside by the swimming pool. So I go out there, Gary, go out the door. And the guy says, I see the sign says it's $30. Watch this. Just to walk outside. I said, I just want to see the screen. He said, well, that's fine. It's still $30. I said, have a good day, sir. By the way, I prospected him a little bit. He said, I'm good. I got a good job. <laughs> the place was dead, Mr. Kinko. Anyway, so I get it. I, got, I found the elevator, got downstairs, way to the lady at the door, gave her a card, walked out, got in my car, paid the $15. And then I, uh, I got a text because I got, I got a text. So I had to go to P.O. Box, pick up. So I had left my shorts at the, at the Ismail's trunk coming back from, from Fresno. Went by and got that. 
got another name and number. Well, that was my second one for the day. But the whole idea is freedom. My day is full of freedom because why? I paid, what's that James Brown? I paid the cost of me to, I put my time in. So now I'm enjoying the fruits of my labor because I'm leaving Sunday. Uh, well, anyway, so anyway, let's go back. Beach money is you have complete, and I'll underline the word complete. Complete and underline the word total and underline the word freedom. You have complete and total freedom, Miss Akinko, to live your life the way you want. To, oh my God. No, it, it didn't say that, did it, Miss Miss Estrella? The way you want to, Kathleen Williams, the way you want to, Miss Ismail, the way that you want Ersa Allen, you're on your way, young lady. I love you. You're amazing. On the way, like the way you want to, Miss Tammy, the way you want to. Mm, mm, mm. I put that in parentheses and I I, I I got my yellow highlighter to live your life the way you want to, the way you want it. Let that sink in. See, that's the power of our business in ACM. Now, you get to hang out with your favorite people. I call a buddy of mine, I say, hey, man, I'm coming to your town. Let's hang out. Let's go to dinner. Your favorite people. When you have beach money, you can sleep in. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Sleep in or take the entire week off. Now let me ask Daryl Ransom. When was the last time you took an entire week off, and you still make you still make money? You get to buy whatever you want to buy. Hmm. hmm. Whatever you want to buy, Miss Tammy. <laughs> Elder Palmer, listen to this. You can live near the ocean, in the forest in the mountains or in the desert. Gosh, I think I'm in the desert. Hey, Tom and Susan Ford, what about you guys? You may choose to travel the world, hint, hint, that's one of my hot buttons, and explore exotic lands. Oh my God, you have no idea. I've been around the world in a lot of places because of the business of ACN. It's fun to know that no matter what you're doing, listen to this, Miss Melinda Batiste, I think of you when I think it is. It's fun. No matter no matter what you're doing, you get you're getting paid. You're getting what? Paid. What Miss Pat Robinson? Paid. 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 Sam Foster. Paid. No, he's not here. <laughs> Freddie Sherman. You're getting paid. No matter what you're doing, do you guys realize what it means to get paid 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Miss Tracy Gilmore. Bill Gates leveraged himself of 168,000 people. Now watch this. He had done Microsoft and Agents. Now think about it, he still gets what? Paid. He's leveraged himself on 168,000 people. Yes, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you wonder why he's a billionaire many times over. Mm -mm -mm. You get paid while you're shopping in the mall. Oh my God, where's all the women at? Girl, I was out shopping, I'm still getting paid. Mr. Marie B. Yeah, still getting what? Paid. You're getting paid while you're at the movie theaters. Oh my God, Millie Afternoon, I love going. There's only three or four people and myself in there. When I deserve to go, after I make money, then I go. It's always deserving. You are getting paid while you're out at dinner with your family. Miss Anita, I know you love that. Heather Perry, I know you love that part. Let me read that again. Herbert, Mr. Herbert, what's the Herbert? Listen, you're getting paid while you're out with dinner with your family. You are getting paid while you're golfing. You're getting paid while you're taking a drive through the mountains. You're getting paid while you are. You're getting paid while you uh, while you awake boarding. What? While wake boarding, okay, on the water, okay. You're getting paid while you're sleeping. Imagine at each minute, a few coins are being deposited into your bank account, Sherry on. Let that, let that sink in right now. Hmm, get deposit into your bank account. I have a close friend of mine who gets paid beach money. He was sleeping in the front of the TV when his wife came in and woke him up and said, leave me alone, honey. I'm making money. <laughs> he was sleeping. His wife woke him up and said, leave me alone. I'm making money. We go back to sleep. Now, see, that's the power of leverage and residual income, Elder Palmer. So I want you to understand the potential of what beach money has to offer you. See, not be, but 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 residual income has that effect. I was reading a book today. I was listening to a tape, and I'm gonna have it in the near future. And I'm gonna read. I'm gonna give you a couple things out of it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this for later, but I'm gonna just tell you a few things. It's called a 15 skills that can make you a fortune. I was listening to it this morning, and the first four skills I'm gonna talk about just for a second. Number one, financial management. 
financial management. And I'm going to go into this later in, the, in, in next month. But financial management. How many got financial management? How many manage your time? How many did you manage your 25 calls a day? See, some of you I actually go get three leads a day. Mm -hmm. See, three leads a day will keep a job away. But see, I, I do more than that. That's why I'm where I'm at. I got, I got it. But see, financial management is so important. Financial management. Financial management. Financial management. Are you managing your time or you just let it get away? Number two, people skills. People skills. And I'm going to play this recording next month. But people skills. How's your people skills? Very important. Do you have the talent to talk to anybody from A to Z? See, people skills are very important. And number three is sales. See, people really go to H-E-L-L, then S-E-L-L. But see, the whole world revolves around sales, but nobody ever told you that. So how good at you is, is selling the ACN opportunity? And all I do is share it. When I don't sell it, I really share it. Okay. And number four is leadership. Now, these are skills that can make you what a fortune. That's four of the 15 skills that make your fortune. Now I'm gonna give you four more today, and then like I say, we'll uh, we'll end the call. Number one, ne next number, the 12th skill is public speaking. It had to be public speaking, but can you speak over a Zoom call to get people in the business? Some of you, you're passing on. I got that, but work on that skill. And number 13, it says make marketing and communication. How good at you marketing yourself and communication to people? The opportunity of ACN. That's what that's very important. And next is time management. Are you managing your time? Are you, you know, I put an hour a day. Did you manage that? When I got started, I put an hour, I had a journal. An hour a day, I managed that, to squeeze that into my business to build my AC business, although I had two other comp three other companies, real estate, mortgages, and a piece of an insurance company. But I squeezed that in because why? I was managing my time. Most of us, I said, what happened yesterday? Can you account for your last 24 hours? Well, I, I kind of, well, because we didn't manage it right. The more you get into management of your time and, ma and financial management, off to the races. That's the blessing. And number 15 was investing. What does that mean? Investing back into your business. Investing going to the, uh, the internationals. Are you investing into helping other people get there? These are things that are very critical to understanding how to build your ACM business.